Sukhoi Gar. Greetings, I am Tad Larkin, the lore master of Mandalore. And today I'm going to be digging through the archives to elaborate on Arc 77, better known as Fordo. Cloned from the Mandalorian bounty hunter Jango Fett about 10 years before the Battle of Geonosis, Arc 77 was bred as an advanced recon clone commando in the Grand Army of the Republic. Being bred as an ARC trooper meant that he was not subject to the same genetic and conditioning treatments as the regular run-of-the-mill clone troopers, allowing 77 to maintain his independence. 77 earned the nickname Fordo amongst his fellow ARC trooper trainees, and he quickly showed promise in a leadership role during many of the battle simulations, earning him the assigned rank of captain. Upon the completion of his training, Fordo and the rest of the ARC troopers were placed in stasis tubes and maintained a state of natural hibernation until the Galactic Republic needed them most. That moment came in 21.83 BBY, two months after the start of the Clone Wars, when the Confederacy of Independent Systems launched an all-out assault on the Republic cloning facilities on Kamino. Kaminoian Prime Minister Lama Su and Jedi Master Shock T released the ARC Troopers in a desperate but successful attempt to defend Kamino from the Separatists, and thus, Fordo began his tour of duty in the GAR. Fordo's first assignment came two months later during the Republic's invasion of the intergalactic banking clan homeworld of Munilinst, where General Obi-Wan Kenobi and the Third Systems Army fought to seize the planet and capture Chairman Sand Hill. Captain Fordo led a crack team consisting of both ARC troopers and regular clone troopers, tasked with taking out a massive artillery emplacement, defending the capital city of Harnadane before it could wreak havoc among Republic forces. Upon entering Harnadane's airspace, the ARC's LAAT gunship was shot down in the middle of an empty plaza, and they were pinned down by a team of droid snipers. Fordo and the ARC fought their way through only stopping to take out an armored assault tank and to survey the area surrounding their target. Ascending the base of the city's defense cannon, Fordo's team quickly took out the battle droid defenders, placed their charges, and then successfully eliminated their target. But the battle wasn't over yet, as Fordo and his ARC troopers assisted General Kenobi in storming the CIS HQ and after a scuffle with the Jedi bounty hunter Dirge, they were able to capture the IG banking clan chairman, Sand Hill. Ah, uh, yes. I believe you were surrendering. Upon the conclusion of the Battle of Munilinst, Fordo and his team received great praise for their actions during the battle, and his ARC trooper team from then on would be known as the Munilinst Ten. Fordo's next assignment would not be an easy one, as him and the Munilins 10 were to conduct an extraction mission of several minor and high-profile Jedi from the failed Republic assault on Hypori. They approached the droid perimeter, surrounding a crashed Acclimator-class assault ship, and, with the aid of a jamming signal from their modified LAAT gunship, Fordo and his squad managed to slip past the ranks of Super Battle Droids and then disembarked from their transport. Fordo's scanners picked up three life signs, and while detachments of the Munilins 10 recovered the barely breathing Jedi Master Shock T and Ayla Sakura, Fordo and his heavy weapons specialist engaged a rather surprised General Grievous, who was, at the time, still locked in a fierce duel with Jedi Master Kiyadi Mundi. Fordo, a quad gunner, and a Z6 rotary blaster cannon managed to suppress the Supreme Commander of the CIS military long enough for Kiyadi Mundi to get aboard the LAAT, where they left atmosphere before Grievous could shoot them out of the sky. Out of the seven Jedi who participated in the Battle of Hypori, only four survived, three of which Fordo and the Munilins 10 successfully evac'd, and, for his actions on Hypori, Fordo was presented with the Chancellor's Service Medal, but he refused, however, and recommended that the honor be bestowed upon CT-43-002, Fordo's squadmate who died on Unilinst. 
though he turned down the Chancellor's Service Medal when Phase 2 equipment was issued to all clone troopers both new and still serving in the GAR, Fordo was honored with a set of Jai Galar Lasur Haise, or simply Jang eyes, painted on his new Phase 2 helmet, which were a traditional Mandalorian symbol of honor, often worn by clan leaders. There isn't much data regarding Captain Fordo and the Mutalins 10's actions during the later years of the war, partly because the Commission for the Preservation of the New Order, or Compnor for short, forged, destroyed, and altered many of the documents from the Clone Wars. However, we do know Fordo was present during the Battle of Coruscant in 19 BBY, where the CIS launched a massive assault on the Republic's capital, and Fordo valiantly defended Sector 4 from an onslaught of super battle droids, wielding a DC-15A blaster rifle one-handed. Being reinforced by Jedi Grandmasters Yoda and Mace Windu, Captain Fordo led his men to push the CIS forces right flank, while Yoda and Windu carved a path through the droids on the left. The Jedi have the left. All of the known records on Captain Fordo cease after the Battle of Coruscant, and it is unclear what became of him after the Clone Wars. Whether he deserted the GAR during Order 66 like most of the remaining ARC troopers, or if he remained to serve in the Imperial Army in one form or another, we may never know. This ends my findings on Captain Fordo. If you have any suggestions for future transmissions, don't be afraid to drop a comment. In the meantime, keep your comm channels open for future transmissions, and don't forget to subscribe! Tad Larkin, out.